Welcome to Different Gravy, not just another Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm one of the hosts, Richard Miller, and my co-host is filled with sympathy for Che Dunkley and his fellow defenders today because he too finds it very hard to do his day job with a big League One striker standing next to him. Your friend of mine, Dr. Luke Gledall. How are you doing today, Luke? I'm doing pretty well. How are you today, Rich? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, you, you quite often find you get to about lunchtime, you've been doing your job really well, and then your boss? I don't know. This scenario is quite difficult. Hmm. For some reason, then, Enoch Shawomni stands over you for the second half of the day and uh, <laughs> your work goes completely to tatters. <sighs> that's, that's a common feeling, isn't it? It is. It is a common feeling, yes. <laughs> hmm. But you're well in, yeah. in yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm generally doing pretty well today. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, I've got to say happy hat-trick of Heather's Day to you. And... Uh, Doff my cap as as we always do on 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 the the twentieth of November, uh, marking Neil Mellor's triumvirate of Bond's brilliance against MK Dons many moons ago. <laughs> Can you guess how long ago that was? That, that uh, hat trick of feathers. Um, I'm going to guess that was. I think that was eleven years ago today. You would nailed it. Did you know? I, I'm just calculating because like he wasn't around for the promotion season. He was yeah. the bright light in a pretty bad relegation season. Yeah. And yeah, there we go. There we go. And I, I know those well three done. seasons very well because they were the three seasons me and you had season tickets next week. Mm. Well, you win nothing at all, no prize. But um, my congratulations to you. And that, that's 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 worth something in turn, isn't it? Mm. Uh, shall we shall we talk about uh, a bit of nose? Let's do it. Breaking hoo hoos. That sweet, sweet tone. Uh, do you want to talk about the depressing, awful, and then the transfer link, or do you want to talk about the transfer link then the depressing, awful? Well, let's get the depressing, awful out of the way with because it was it's really bad, and I, I will probably linger on it for a bit. But I, yeah, I just want to get over with. <laughs> <sighs> Basically, we got the performance against Plymouth that we were all fearing the first time round. Yeah, like, yeah. In summary. Well, that, that, so, seems to be, that seems to be our home home away from home park. Mm. <laughs> that, that, that's a regular sweet, sweet remembrance of just dross and just yeah. spineless, gutless performances with nothing going forward. So this was the, the replay of our very creditable draw with Plymouth. Uh, we ended up going back to their place. But... There was nothing creditable about this, was there? Um, and and I mean, what did what was this? Well, nobody managed to see it because it wasn't on telly anywhere. There was just nothing showing it. So mm. um, I mean, I eventually found the highlights, but they they seemed to yeah. be. It was a bit like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You know, we found it in a found it in a basement at the city hall with the sign saying "Beware of the Leopard." You know, I think <laughs> that's that's what it happened. It's like it was a real task to find, like. I guess because yeah. the FA Cup and the qualification, you know, the maybe the rights to the highlights and the publishing of that is not kind of put through put through the football club in any sense. So it wasn't on Sheffield Wednesday's official YouTube. There wasn't any kind of announcement from the club that highlights were out. I mean, they they yeah. do that re- religiously, even if I don't want to see them. As yeah. has been plenty of times we've been absolutely gutted, gutted like a fish <laughs> by another yes. team, and then it's like we've got the highlights, and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but this time, for the sake of this, and, and also just having, uh, I mean, for the sake of <clears throat> being a obsessed Wednesdayite and doing this podcast, I had wanted to have some kind of visual as to what was going on. Yeah, yeah. So I did find it on the depths of YouTube on uh, the FA Cup zone page. And I think in the UK, I think it's GeoLocks to uh, the Beeb, I think, have, have highlights yeah. online. So the BBC and ITV are sharing the rights to the FA Cup this season. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. Between them, they have at least eight terrestrial channels plus web uh, app pre- presences, mm-hmm. but none of they just didn't feel the 
need or desire to put any version of this match <laughs> uh, out into the out into the world. Um, and then, yeah, so even the highlights was a bit tricky. Was anything picked up for the replay reel? Was that why Stockport Bolton was on the Wednesday? Because I'm not a bit of a. There was one. There was one game picked out. Might have been Stockport Bolton. No, it was Wigan. Whoever Wigan played was the one that was on telly. <laughs> Wigan against whoever. Um, but we had a strange, strange sort of lineup out. Uh, once again, we're in this position where injuries are taking their toll, and there's chopping and changing. So Patterson played yet another different position and ended up playing centre-back by all accounts. Yeah, we seem to have, well, we've since learned that Marvin Johnson is sidelined, right? This is the yeah. thing we learned from last weekend. Yeah, so just as we found that, we've just found that bit of balance in the team, it's it's gone again. It's gone again, uh, so we, we rethink the plan. So they decided to seemingly, I think the, the, the mentality was in the... the the note was that Patterson was was a, a one of the three centre backs. I believe so. I believe so. Mm. Uh, and Adoniran at right wing back. Really, Adoniran, um, who's now injured again, right for this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, sorry, just they, it may well be that they were both on TV because Stockport County Bottom Wanderers was on the Wednesday, so it may well be that they were on TV, but. On the Tuesday, Solly Hall Moors against Wigan Athletic was on. Okay, which, which makes order. which makes better sense. But I I just I don't know. It just seems weird that there's. I think I, it's only seen weird for me because I live abroad and there's like a a TV access to everything. Yeah, you know. So no, I don't know. It seemed it seemed weird, but uh, you know, a blessing really, a blessing that we didn't have to watch this shit. <laughs> Well, supposedly, again, we started brightly, mm. supposedly. Um, but uh, as we know, if we don't get a goal during that bright start, it very quickly fades and then Doesn't we start back into our self-harming, just making mistakes defensively, giving the ball away, giving chances away. And this was – this is a real if – you, if you love defensive mistakes, uh, this is a real treat. For the senses. This is a real um, love, actually, of defensive truth. <laughs> love, actually, a tour de force mm. of all different flavors of defensive mistakes. Um, again, Kamara shines for, for Plymouth. I think he looks such a good player. Mm. Um, he set up the first one for Garrick. That's the only one on the highlights that you can't see a mistake from Wednesday, but I believe we were. It, that was Brown was easily dispossessed, dallying on the ball. Right. Uh, so you can't see that in the highlight, but all of the reports mm. said Brown was the one that stuffed up there. And that is not the first time um, he has a habit of doing that. And to the point where I was worried today when he came on, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, because he doesn't seem to take responsibility in those moments. And uh, once he loses the possession, he doesn't react in the way that you'd hope him to either. But mm. that set, set De Kamara uh, free on in behind him on that flank. Um, he played it across to Garrick and it was a very smart finish from the edge of the box. I don't think there's too much Will Smith could have done about it really, but mm. he hit it well. He wasn't well marked, Garrick. Um, there's two defenders there and Deli Bashiru there. None of them seem to bother picking him up, um, which is disappointing. But again, maybe a bit of a theme with this three. There's no there's no individual responsibility being taken when they play in a three. They're, whereas, you know, you'd sort of have a man generally. Um, second one was Bannon being caught on dallying on the ball. Yeah, that was a big mistake, wasn't it? From Big mistake. Yeah. Huge. Huge. I th- yeah, just a bit over elaborate with this Cruyff turn and Hardy was on to him and, and the ball broke again to Kamara, who who fed a really good pass through to Hardy, uh, who, cool as you like, sort of stared down the keeper and, and, and rolled it in at the near post, just sort of bobbling it off the bottom mm. of the post. Um, but it just, yeah, kind of all too familiar, unfortunately, that uh, a couple of goals down within 35 minutes and... Not much hope for the rest of the game. Um, that, that they definitely seem to have our number, and it's interesting. It, we it feels like they've played against us three different ways, 
Um, just looking at the highlights, they looked like they were doing a lot of pressing, which they didn't do a huge amount of in the other two games. The mm. first game, they stood just far enough off us to relieve the pressure and we made our own mistake, uh, made our own problems. Uh, the second one, they pressed a bit, but we worked our way around it. That was good. And then this third time, we just kept getting caught by their press. Yeah. Um, the third, I think, is possibly the worst of all three goals. Oh, yeah. No, I think that's uh, that's a definitely a winner. <laughs> um, added, added to by... So Wildsmith charges out to the far side of his penalty box, mm-hmm. gets it completely wrong. It's one of these where the keeper's sort of sliding with the ball in his hands and then drops it, you know, st- tries to stop it in the box. But he did that with Garrick stood right beside him. So effectively all he did was take the ball down for Garrick, stop it, and then take his hands away so that Garrick could go and score in a, basically an open net. Yeah. Despite Duncan's best efforts, he did an amazing sort of Superman-esque leap to try and get set on, on Garrick's shot. So I've got a reference as a bit of foreshadowing and spoiling to something from the okay. world of American football, but do you think that's a bit like a kick setter? You know, he's kind yeah, of done it was, that. Yeah, it was he? exactly like that. And there you go. <laughs> he even took his hands away nicely at the right time for it. <laughs> oh, dear. And then he had the audacity to go and flail his arms around like it was somebody else's fault. Hmm. He didn't need to go for it. When he went for it, he should have made sure. All he needs to do is clear it. Yeah. And apparently it's somebody else's fault, but Joe Wildsmith. Wild. Absolutely wild. Mm. <laughs> but we really need to next season kind of exercise the uh, ability to just cast Joe Wildsmith aside and oh, get somebody yeah. else. Like, I can't. Yeah. I, I think it's staggering we've afforded two academy goalkeepers to develop into professional contracts, lengthy potential yeah. professional contracts with Sheffield Wednesday and give them multiple, multiple occasions and kicks of kicks of the ball, so to speak, starting goalkeeping gloves and just be just be just be just be tosh overall. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're just not neither of them are up to up to snuff. I'm not sure how I'm curious how, especially like with looking at has anyone done much of a lone watch looking at uh, how Cammy Cammy D is doing at Exeter? I know he had a good well, start we, there. Well, yeah, we got a lot of talk about his early, his how wonderful he was early doors, didn't we? Particularly around when Bailey Pico, the the first Plymouth game when Bailey Pickup fell had had a bit of a poor match and a poor run. We were oh Cameron Dawson's getting clean sheet after clean sheet at Exeter. That's what. People sound like when they talk. About yeah, that. well, I think that was that was looking at Exeter's results. That must have been around the beginning beginning of the season because he he hasn't kept a clean sheet in. If he's played all these games, he's not kept a clean sheet in about ten games, roughly. Which starting well and then failing is exactly what him and Wildsmith have made a real mm. art form out of. Mm-hmm. Looking competent for a game or two, and then absolutely showing you that you were stupid to have any faith in them. It's, uh, it's their stock and trade. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to give you the full details, he's got five clean sheets and seventeen. Okay, which I don't know. I don't know. I still don't think he's he's really the answer to our future goalkeeping issues. You know, because we're we're living on borrowed time with a loan with uh, BPF, right? And when and when uh, Bailey's off. You know, backpacking, yeah. backpacking around Europe. Then uh... <laughs> they are. I mean, next to a second in League Two. So I mean, it, he's part of a good a winning team there. To be fair, mm. to um, I don't know. But then League Two is not League One, and League One is not the Championship. And he's played both of them. Have played the majority of their football at Championship level, which they are neither of them anywhere near. Yes. Uh, by, they, by they don't even they don't even look up to much nothing this no. year. No, frankly, so yeah, exactly. So there mm. we go. I mean, that's that's the uh, the disappointing. <laughs> the first time we've lost in in the first round of uh, of that of the FA Cup as well, that famous old trophy. Um, so that's like a hundred and something years. <laughs> now, isn't it like oh six oh seven or something? They said Wednesday have crashed out the first round before. Oh, well, was it at home? We've not then. There was some. Uh, I thought on the first game there was the first Plymouth game on the telly. They were saying that we've not lost at that stage. That stage. 
for a hundred and something years. I'm not sure. Anyway, I, I thought it was. Uh, oh, it's I never different gravy. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We know half of the things half of the time. Different gravy. <laughs> That's that's coming out at a twenty five percent hit rate, folks. <laughs> We're hundred uh, percent right, one in four times. <laughs> um, I, I guess there's like a weird dimension. I'm glad we can, you know. I mean, I don't really have much notes because we didn't see much, and then we just watched the highlights, and there isn't really anything to really gather from that. And uh, I, there was even a funny dimension, which is I know like a Plymouth fan was on our talk asking, said, how come you sold X many tickets, but only this many people turned up? And it's like, mm. well, thanks to Wednesday's away ticketing points system, people just essentially bought, bought a, a null ticket to get points on the... on the. Which I did think to myself afterwards, that's <laughs> quite a good idea. <laughs> what do you think? Should have got in on that. Yeah, because I hadn't, I'd, it had never occurred to me. Uh, to do that, it's a, it's tricky to get to away games as a Wednesday fan. It's it away is. games. It away is. days are better than going to Hillsborough because half the people don't make any noise, and the other half look at you angrily if you make a noise, which means there's nobody that's making a noise and enjoying themselves. Um, <laughs> so an away day is where you really yeah. get to enjoy being a fan. Do you think that, like, I mean, we're God, I mean, we're this is the hilarious thing that we've, you know, we've lost in the cup. This is, I mean, outside of outside of the first day, sorry, the first game of the season in the EFL Cup, which wasn't technically mm. a loss. I mean, we're out, but it was a draw in terms of a result. You know, this is our first loss in the cup, I guess. And yeah, and also this is coming at the part where you know we can still bring out the. Um, we can still bring out the uh, the ability to be a happy clapper and say Wednesday are undefeated in eleven now. I think it's something like this, including this yeah. thing, and we can have this uh, you know this Huddersfield like narrative of uh, how we're just generally untouchable when we're not untouchable. Yeah. We're just a team who are pretty average and kind of have a degree of solidity. A degree of solidity. It's 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 not a great deal. I must say. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So there's that, and a third in solidity from the. The, thing the open university. Exactly. Uh, the thing we're really seeing about this is, especially kind of coming around to this part of the season, there's such a, uh, there is such a, fuck, this is not at the moment. <laughs> uh, give me a second. Give a help at all. What are you reaching for? We're getting into that part of the season where with injuries are really starting to rack up in true Sheffield Wednesday fashion. So, is there a dimension to look at this and say another cup game, another further congestion to this fixture list, which is pretty packed, and then we're still progressing and we still have a game fairly yeah. soon in uh, the next round of the uh, the Papa John's Trophy? Um, is this yeah. is this is that is that the positive we take from this? And we just we um, one of the positives to say is we've only got to play Plymouth one more time this season. Yes, yeah, those are good positives, definitely. Mm. I think you're. I mean, I think you're right because there was a lot of talk. This was not a game that anybody wanted to play. Nobody was looking for an extra fixture in a busy, congested period. Um, and in particular, we we near nearly narrowly avoided that. If, if Lewis Wing had done better with one of his two efforts towards the end of that first game, mm. um, we could have been spared the the uh, the blushes there. But um, I don't know. I th- I mean I. You want to win games of football. You also, when you lose, you don't. You want to, you want to lose badly. Do you lose well doing the good things, like mm. doing the right things? Um, this was a bad loss to take in terms of you think in terms of morale and things like that because we just we're so roundly thumped. But um, yeah, we're out of the. We don't have those FA Cup games to worry about anymore. So there's there's, there's a bit more room for respite. Um, we've progressed in one of the three cups, so we've got those games still to look forward to. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll have more full weeks to, to nurse injuries and things like that. Mm. I think I don't think at this level we have time off for FA Cup weekends. No, at the third round weekend. No, I, I think, think at, at that level it, it basically just gets called as you are probably still going to be in this competition. Yeah. So I, I mean I'd I'd like it if we could reschedule some stuff to to make up that I think that's a better thing playing a Saturday game than yeah 
I don't know if the club's going to do that, whether they're proactive or who else they're coming up against for the next second round, but we might just have a weekend off, I guess. Yeah. Which, looking at the schedule, isn't the worst thing in the world. No, no. So, no. you know, I'm trying to look at some degrees of positivity from this. Um, and again, hopefully, yep, I've just checked the Papa John's trophy. Plymouth aren't in it in, in, the, in the second round. So we only <laughs> have to play them one more time this season. So that's that's a real benefit, I should say. And then we'll play them at home, and then hopefully, hopefully we can try and I don't know score a goal past them. That seems to be something yeah. else that we, we haven't done in three attempts so far. It just it's such a it's a shame to go from one of our better performances of the season, arguably Plymouth at home, to back almost sort of back to square one. But mm. um, yeah, yeah, I, I, hard to I mean. I, I think possibly for the long run, the, the the main mission is the league this season. So it's one less distraction. So yeah, so let's uh, let's look at it at that positive positive hat on mm. um, as we uh, as we progress through. Um, yeah, I, th- I I don't know. I think we are just scheduled for games all the way through here. Maybe that first weekend in December. Yeah, so we've got two games in a, in that, a week there. Because we play Wednesday, Tuesday, but we don't play the Saturday in the middle, which I'm guessing is round two of the FA Cup. Anyway, shall we get on to today's match? Oh no, we've got one bit of a transfer rumor to talk about. So we've been linked with an unnamed defender. We've made a deal, made an offer for an unlinked, uh, an unnamed defender, a linked but unnamed, not an unlinked. That's it. And uh, some people have made some conjectures. Think it's Andrea Wisdom. Somebody on our talk was maybe, maybe being a liar or maybe maybe being crushingly real by mentioning Jake Wrights, who used to be of Doncaster. He's apparently had a pretty serious injury and then he's coming back from uh, rehabilitation with Doncaster Rovers while he's doing that. So if, but if he's supposed to be out for a long time, then not the player that Sheffield Wednesday want to buy and bring in, but maybe mm. unfortunately for the case of Shea Dunkley, uh, maybe the player that Sheffield Wednesday will bring in. So, but who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Apparently an offer's been made, Darren Moore said, and they're given until Monday evening to make a decision. Apparently has a few other offers on the table. So we'll see what happens. I think it's positive that that's happening. I guess yeah. in free agent look, I mean, Mendes Lang is still around the club, still training. Yeah. So interesting. Um, you wonder if that's a situation where maybe more thought he had the allowance and the money in the coffers to bring in Mendes Lang. But then since with a defensive crisis, maybe the focus has shifted elsewhere. Maybe, yeah, he maybe had a bit of room for one one, one player. But uh, I also wonder with Mendes Lang, we've got the, we've had the talk about Corbineau not being happy, although he's played most games since then. Mm. Took Corbineau not being happy with his game time, so perhaps looking to go back in January and get another loan move somewhere. Um, there's also been talks, some talk about so getting being loaned out. Yep. Yep, that was that's been a, a rumor and conjecture that's been going around, going around some websites. So, yeah, so he might be thinking if one of those two things happens, having Mendes Lang on tap. Although you know, in the, in the case of So, he's just been used so little. Pardon the bun. Um, why would you? I don't know why you'd need to, to bring somebody in to replace him up because he's just got so little game time outside of the mm. Papa John's trophy. Mm-hmm. Uh, strange one, but um, good that we're yeah. looking at a defensive option though, in terms of a free agent. Yeah, That's something so. which it, it's something that just naturally feels. And there's a lot of, I think, especially in this football environment, I think it's I found it feels in a weird way like it's maybe been accelerated with the pandemic. But I don't know if that's also a mentality that we look at it from a very kind of um, a very confusing standpoint that me and you do jobs where we work in an office or work mm-hmm. remotely now. And, you know, we compared the life of a footballer to our own, which is has some similarities, but in some ways is very, very different in that case. So maybe I'm making a mistake in comparing it with this environment, but genuinely something has happened financially within football, thanks to the pandemic, which has meant that, yeah, there's a lot of free agents out there. There's a lot of competent, experienced players yeah. who are without, without a club. And you'd hope in the case of Mendes Lang, if we do bring him in, we we can we know where he's at fitness wise because he's been you know spent so many weeks around the club. But I do like the mm. fact we're looking at defenders. We're clearly light there. 
mm-hmm. in terms of numbers. If Dominic Iorfa, I mean, it sounds like Dominic Iorfa, there's no date in mind for when he'll be back. So mm. I think we do have to plan for not having him at any point this season, certainly not having him up to speed. So bringing in another defender would seem sensible. And, yeah. and bringing Brennan back is a good step along that, that mm-hmm. way. It was strange that that hadn't happened really until very recently. And I think it's been like semi-officially muted that uh, Gibson has gone back to Everton. So right, okay. I mean, why don't why don't we kind of look at this? Why don't we kind of pin a look at this point about defensive options to be the segue to talk us about the lineup today with today's game? Okay. So the point I want to put out is uh, I looked at the lineup and the thing that's going to connect this is suddenly Luke got a bit Billy Shakespeare because he said, is this a back four I see before me? <laughs> and I don't know why, A, I foresee that because it's probably going to be a 3 5 2 again, which it was, or B, why I foresee a Shakespearean tragedy yet again. <laughs> so there's still this mentality, you know, I don't mean to sound like a broken record as I put my notes here, but... Maybe if there's a defensive injury crisis, maybe play less of them. <laughs> so Brennan oh, gets Brennan. This is now the finally point which we say Brennan gets a game mm-hmm. because seemingly Moore has has come to the revelation, sitting in his big bubble bath at home. <laughs> maybe had the idea of playing round pegs and round holes rather than better quality of pegs just in different shapes and mashing them into the space. <laughs> so the other thing that was strange midweek and just in terms of selections and at the back, it was really weird to see Bailey pick up Farrell on the bench for us against uh, Plymouth. Right. But so uh, he was back, but clearly we're giving him a bit of time off because he's spent, played a lot of football for Northern Ireland. I don't Ireland. even know how it's legal for him to be there, but uh, it, it's weird that it wasn't Render. It just this. We're always picking against our young players. It seems in, in almost every situation. Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah, it, it, yeah. So we, so we, it was a it was a it was a back five again. Um, Palmer being the left side of that three at the back. Uh, Dunkley keeping his place in the middle, and then Brennan coming in on the Brennan Bauer role on the on the right side of that. <laughs> Um, Jack Hunt was right wing back and Corbinu was left wing back. Hmm. Um, Luongo back in the team, back in the, starting a game again. Amazing, yeah. And Windass and Gregory both on the bench, which was uh, nice, nice to see. Nice introductions. Mm-hmm. Um, Luongo, I said, finally, prediction. He plays a blinder and then we don't see him for three months again. <laughs> yeah. Cynicism, uh, cynicism aside, I really hope he's back for good. Hoping he's, that Windass would, yeah, sorry, go on. hoping that Windass would get some minutes. I didn't see Gregory at all. I thought Gregory was completely out of the picture when I was looking at the lineup, but uh, clearly had a bit of uh, Lee Gregory blindness looking at the. Uh, <laughs> uh, dear, no, no, Den Den either as well. No Den Den, but a strong looking bench again. Not nothing there defensively really, apart from Jake Brown. Um, but uh, yeah, lots of lots of top players really on that bench mm-hmm. in in many ways um and interestingly again i did make the comment when we uh we had the papa john's game and buyers and longo made their return to first team action um it got to the 70th minute mark before longo was taken off and i sort of exasperatedly said why does longo never get eased back in and i do think I've, I've got to say case in point how often does he come back after months and months out and then play a full game? It seems to always happen to him. Yeah, yeah. And he looked knackered by the end of today. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we had a sub left. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird that he doesn't get treated with kick gloves. He's injured constantly and nobody treats him like a, a, a the breakable man that he is. Totally bizarre. But uh, nice to see him in there. He's He's... Undoubtedly, we're a better team. We're better put together when he's in, in on the pitch. He seems to be our only midfielder who reads danger and finds himself where the ball is going to drop more often than not. He's strong enough to put in tackles. He's, dare, he's daring and brave enough to put himself where he's going to get hurt at times. Probably doesn't help with his injury record. Mm. Um, but he's also got great ability on the ball. He's not just a destroyer. He's 
he's he's good at passing. He's good at shooting. He's he's an absolute all rounder. Um, yeah, so lovely to have him back. And I mean, again, this was this was a good start. A run of good starts. Run of good starts. So I, I must say my first note, I mean, this is a very frantic paced game. Um, mm. We definitely helped do a little bit of work for, for Accrington today. Yes. Um, we did give them a bit of a helping hand in a defensive way, right? Yeah. For their offensive. Uh, second minute, what was Dunkley thinking? Yeah. Giant let off. You know, he, he tried to play it out and they took a shot. Looked like it went in. One of those where it hits the stanchion and kind of rolls it's behind the, the yeah, net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, one thing I'd like to bring up in that one thing that was completely overlooked, which was maybe one of the only things we got from the referee today, because that's another typical trope in this tier, is, is that officiating the poor. And got a lot to say about that a bit later on this game. I think yeah. Longo absolutely mullered one of their players in that. And <laughs> I thought that was Lisa Yellow or a throw-in. He's, he's got that sort of Hutchinson thing where he seems to get away with one or two real nasty mm. tackles. <laughs> oh, he did. He did get a yellow. Okay, it wasn't publicised. Like that is actually on my, is actually on the notes. So that that was. That oh, was he fair. did get a yellow. Yeah, sorry, he got yellow. Three but then they three. didn't get a free kick from that, though. I think that was a weird thing. We yeah. kind of got it at the end. They kind of let. I think they let it play on. So then we got a goal kick. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm. So weird. Yeah, the first of many odd. But then, things. but then Richie Miller. But then. Then we actually get into. A lot of this, 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 uh, this intense Wednesday fluid attacking, yeah. Player, which is like, who is this Sheffield Wednesday side? <laughs> Bannon physics long, and Hunt was on the end of it. That was a lovely yeah. ball. He was in on the angle. Um, you know, picked up this giant long diagonal from Bannon, which was just exquisite. He it crossed good. it in on the deck, and then it bounced. It pretty much just bounced back off the Accrington keeper. Didn't yeah. seem like he really knew what to do with it in that situation. <laughs> no, no. But, you know, if there was a defender there, it's kind of one of those, I just want to get a boot to it and try and get it in the direction away yeah. from my goal. But the keeper had no idea, and then it just kind of rolled out for a corner. Didn't much happen from the corner, but yeah, that was uh, we're starting to look dangerous. Yeah. We're insistent, and uh, I know it, just speaking about corners, I know it. I know it worked at one mm. point today. <laughs> But this, considering this is now we are playing one sort of corner again and again and again, I don't think Bannon's very good at this for this corner we're trying to do. <laughs> because everything is supposed to be hung up at the back post hmm. so that Dunkley can, I hope, I think score, but the amount of times Dunkley is like nine feet of back from their front from their back post hmm. um, and just trying to do something, anything with it. It's much more regular that that happens than he gets it within the confines of the goal. Mm. I mean, I suppose this is two two goals from it, so I can see why we keep doing it. It's does, just does that decree a marker of success though with that hit rate? Well, it's better than most of the hit rates we get from balanced corners. We we have a better hit rate with the things we're right about on this podcast, Rich, <laughs> and that's poor. <laughs> It just I, he just seems to hang it way too long more often than not, and mm. it, and I don't know. Nobody seems set up for that, but Dunkley did take one of them very well. We'll get to that, obviously. But um, but then following that quickly, there was a chance afterwards, and then it seemed to be the yeah. narrative of the early minutes is nobody, none of these two teams are doing a very good job of playing it out from the back, as they yes. gave the tamest pass. I said Bannon intercepts in my notes. That's putting a lot yeah. of onus on Bannon. You know, any any one of us could make that interception. We just need to be standing <laughs> yes. where Bannon is, yes. and then we have the ball. Saying that, though, you know, Bannon has a little bit to do. Puts in a lovely little delicate ball to Patterson. Pato makes the wrong decision. He made the wrong choice, didn't he? He, he made have the had wrong go choice. He should have had a go. He's, he's in. He's on the angle. You know, he's still got an element of surprise to their defender, who's completely out of it, and their yeah. goalkeeper, who's <laughs> who's like, what the <laughs> what the hell have they dropped me in this time? That was the kind of situation. <laughs> so he fed it through to Camberry. It was a nice, you know, it was a nice ball, but Camberry was clearly offside by yeah. you know a yeah. good feet, good feet or two. You know, Camberry does his usual thing of bundling at home. 
in his kind of uh, convincingly unconvincing manner. Yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like it, it felt like, I mean, uh, it was crazy. Like we didn't really get much time to kind of reflect on any of these kind of missed opportunities. No, it was frantic. The pace early goes. It's, it's so quick. Um, yeah, just that. And it, it did take on later on in the game. It was more of a basketball sort of feel like they have a go, we have a go. But mm. in the early stages, it was just us having a go by and large. Mm. Um, just constant pressure. We looked like we, we, we could sort of hurt them in different parts of the pitch um, and not the best decision-making at times, probably. Uh, maybe should have done better with some of those chances, but um, yeah, it was, it was good to, good to see. And then not, and we talked about the, a corner working 16th minute, a Bannon corner actually pays off. Dunkley set up at the far post, out muscled his man. There'll be questions about the uh, legality of that amount of muscling, uh, but he he headed it home. That was Very the thirteenth, like, mid twelfth, thirteenth. Thirteenth minute, sorry, yeah. yes, thirteenth. Yeah, no worries. I've just got a chance then uh, as well to talk about, which is something else. But uh, I, you know, the Hackinson were were uh, were quick to protest, and they did very strongly. But I, I thought Dunkley won it pretty fairly. I thought it was... It was six and one half a dozen the other, wasn't it? Yeah. And I I have to admire the sheer agility. I mean, we've talked about... We will talk about this role of this, this set piece that we're doing and him pinging it up, you know, Bannon lumping it in deep at the back post and then trying to, you know, Dunkley trying to kind of rise and showing some real aerial agility, maybe sometimes... Yeah. Some questions around like how good he is at making a connection within that situation but the ability yes. to get up and to do that is something else the fact that we we scored from a corner with dunkley where he's getting low and he's stooping and just so much kind of work to do to get down and around his defender to get on that yeah and to place it into the corner is pretty staggering very it's it's uh it's an interesting yeah, talent you know <laughs> well, I think that's why I, I, you know how you said that everyone scores in training. I mm. think Dunkley scores. I'm, I'm imagining Dunkley scores quite often with his head in training, because mm. um, we talked last week about him being upset about an opportunity that didn't seem to be that apparent as a kind of howling miss or anything like that. But I think he has high expectations of himself in those situations because he does compete so well. Mm. He does attack the ball so well. I think probably he, his priorities are what gets us in trouble a lot of the time because you see it in the way he defends, but it's, mm. it's a fight first. Then can I get, now I've got my head up, can I, now I'm controlling my man, can I get my head up and get a header is, is the next thought. And often it's too late in an attacking sense to, to, to then do that. And mm. defending-wise, what tends to happen is he gives a foul away you know because it's easy to just hit the deck once he's got his hands on you um but yeah i mean really well done that it's a good cut it's a good uh corner from bannon oh yeah and he competed really well for it mm-hmm. one nil mm. already 13 minutes in we're one nil. already we almost handed them back all of the momentum uh that we pass did. from patterson was dreadful um middle of the park under absolutely no pressure he spread the play out looking for jack con but just ended up passing it to their winger and completely selling out jack con yeah um i think i missed just how poor that was i'm going to be honest like i heard really, like i was, yeah. I was in the process of making notes on something else because it was just like i said there's a lot of moments i had to kind of pause my thinking on something too connected yeah. them with what I was seeing. Yeah, it was, it was hard just, to... It was so quick. I think, so. Uh, I think that's why I ended up with 16 minutes in there instead of 13, because it, yeah. it was yeah. so... And Atkinson won a corner. They do a near post and the real bullet yeah. header, like on marks, like coming really in. Really close. Really <laughs> close and brilliant save from Peacock. Oh. Yeah. Really good save. He gets a lot of... He will be getting a lot of uh, kudos today. Will be Yeah, brief. definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Then, we we basically go on an absolutely incredible counter attack. Corbinu and Luongo linking with a one two. Corbinu does a really nice deft one two with Luongo. Luongo pulls. I think off, it was Palmer. Think. You think it was Palmer? I thought it was Luongo. 
Um, I'm pretty sure it was Liam Palmer on the overlap because I think he, I had him marked down as two assists. But it's not this one though. The the point I'm talking about is. Oh, well, sorry, Luongo, sorry, sorry, sorry. We sorry. were we were on the oh. counter from when we nearly conceded. Luongo okay. bent one in, which was a brilliant cross, and then Bannon was running on, and oh, he my kind goodness, of just yes. bundled it wide. Yeah, which just seemed, uh, Sorry, like I was that. so happy about the nature of like his positioning. Luongo's cross, the brilliant one-two with Corbino, the pace and the power to get forward on that counter-attack in devastating fashion. That's all fantastic. Maybe if I go back and look at it and JFK the entire thing, I will kind of look and see Barry Bannon being a little bit disappointing with that finish, I will say. We just know, I mean, you get to the point where you're not excited when it lands with him in front of goal because Mm. we know how it ends. Mm. And it's never, ever a goal, unfortunately. Yeah. Apart from one, one time per season, he gets the goal. Mm. Um, but no, that was brilliant. Sorry, I think the reason I got confused is that was literally the same minute. 17 minutes was when they had their corner and we broke up the other end. And, yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was just so fast. Sorry about that. So, yeah. <laughs> um, then it was, it was a great like- cross from Luongo. I love that line. Cushioned. It was cushioned and on the volley. He yeah. seems to hit, hit great passes in from awkward positions really often. Mm. It's a real yeah. skill of his. Um, I guess maybe partly because because he came from Swindon, didn't he? I wonder if he's sort of he's he's been an out an undersized midfielder for a good chunk of his career. Um, he was at Swindon before he was at QPR, so I think he's kind of had to battle and make the most of the little gaps and moments he gets. Uh, mm. And he, he really makes them pay, which is really a, it's a great trait to have. Um, and another, yet another sort of string to his significant bow. Um, 20 minutes, this was the one that I was so jumping ahead for. Um, Corbino again, he just he looks unplayable. First halves in particular, he just looks. Mm. He's got so much pace. He's currently like in great form. So he's, you know, he's feeling himself, which as a winger is a is a great, great spot to be in. It's a real confidence position and he's confident at the moment. So he's just bowling through people. Um, and Palmer made a great darting run on the overlap. Corbino picked him out, continued his run into space. And Palmer, the, the one-two, finished off the one-two. I don't think Corbino could believe how much room he had when he looked up. <laughs> I think he actually looked a bit shocked at just how wide open the defence had been by that one too. A little bit of smart play, a little bit of pace. And he he had his pick, really. Mm. He was able to take a touch and then pick his spot in the goal. And he, what he chose to do was drill it in at the near post. You know, you know, Theo's, he, uh, Theo's finding himself in the Travelodge advert and he's like, look at how much room there is here. <laughs> I can't believe it. The look on the joyous look on his little Ham- Hamiltonian face. <laughs> what a shot. What a finish. The boy Real can finish. The boy, the boy can strike his foot for a ball. He really mm. can. And Liam Palmer. What a guy. What a guy. What a player. I love um, that he had the confidence and that we we had the you know, we're away from home. We're mm. playing attacking enough football that you got a, an overlapping centre back basically on the edge of their penalty box. It's it's really good, um, and it, it it worked so well. Just that mm. little smart bit of combination play, a bit of one touch football, and they 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 were left looking very very ordinary. And uh, and yeah, a great finish at the at the near post. Um, and just quickly to followed the, compliments to the fans for chanting the Theo chant. Because it's, yes. quite, it's quite smart because, I mean, nobody can pronounce his last name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the good news is, on my commentary, Giddings has moved, moved on from Corbinu to Corbinu, okay. which is, I think, the common thing that we all do. I think we all say yeah. Corbinu. I, I will keep saying Corbinu, even though it's probably more like Corbiano. I think yeah, because it's said. not French, is it? No. He's it's Romanian. Romanian stock, yes. Yeah. But it looks French, and he's from Canada, which is a bit <laughs> It's a bit French, yeah. A bit French. <laughs> well, a bit of it's really French, but most of it's a bit French. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty true. <laughs> um, he, again, sorry, I was on the opposing... Uh, I was on the Accrington. Oh, nice. Country. How did that go? Um, 
Well, all right, but Giddings, again, is giving away our secrets to them. As twice he's been mentioned as, well, I was talking to Giddings, Andy Giddings, and he was Fantastic. saying, so the last game, oh, he was saying they're not very good for set pieces, actually. Oh, good, giving the game away. And then second half, I was just I was talking to Andy Giddings, and he says, you know, Sheffield Wednesday have given away so many leads that they're really getting very nervous in these positions. Oh, what a tosser. He's not saying that, is he, on the uh, on Radio Sheffield? I bet, I, I bet John Pearson's going, uh, what are you going to do, Andy, during half time? He's like, oh, I'm just going to go stretch my legs. And then he walks down <laughs> yeah. to the opposing dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> loose loose kids sink ships. <laughs> exactly. Um, this is around the time when I, uh, I I text my sister to say we need to we need to keep keep at them because they are rattled and we did for once in our miserable lives. <laughs> 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 Not for too much longer, but uh, <laughs> once yeah, in this riches good. riches to rag story of of, of Sheffield Wednesday's <laughs> footballers' careers, a brief hiccup. Where things don't go badly, you know, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, 23rd minutes, Liam Palmer again, but it was a Bannon flick over the top. Mm. Um, Palmer found himself behind the Accrington Stanley defence and he, he continued the momentum of that flick and sort of pushed a volley across the, the front of the goal and Canberry guided it. Over the, the keeper's head into the into the side netting at the far post. Guided, shunted, half volley. Yeah, Canberra, three 0 Who is the this sort of goal that him and Pat have scored? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this Sheffield Wednesday side? Yeah, it was. I mean, it's tremendous. It's it's as good a twenty five minutes of football as we've put together in a long, long time. Mm. Um, and not just that, we were ruthless. We we took our chances. After the first couple of minutes, we took our chances when they came as well. So, yeah, I mean, great stuff. Hmm. Um, I, I thought it was interesting. It was sort of reminded me, remember we played QPR a couple of seasons back? And I think similarly, we were maybe 3 0 up at half time. Yeah. And it was just this bizarre insistence on a, on the combination of playing out from the back, even though we kept catching them. And a high line when they were had the ball, which we kept catching them. And Atkinson yeah. Stanley did the same thing. Mm. They insisted on playing it out from the back when they kept ballsing that up and getting caught. And they kept too high of a line for our, the, the amount. We're not got bags of pace, but we had enough to worry them because they're a massive team. They're not. They're big plodders. They're not movers. <laughs> this Atkinson team. <laughs> I, it was just bizarre that they kept doing it. Unlike QPR, they stopped it in the second half. They sort of made a few adjustments. But um, I, I did make a note slightly presciently that Accrington are as big as a big as big a team as I've seen in a long time, um, and, and they're going to be a danger from set pieces. Who was that player? I think it was right near the end. I think it was somebody was jostling. It might have been a defender. Might have been jostling FDB out on the left. When we were attacking, or kind of attacking, kind of attack defensive, right now the mm. death of the game. He's the tallest player I've seen in a long time. The guy that fouled him, or the guy that was sort of close at hand, not fouling him. Kind of close at hand is like a white dude who was like six, looked like he was six seven. He looked like a basketball player. They're big boys. Big boys. Big boys. Big scary boys. Big scary boys. I, I guess after that, that kind of period of space, while you're. If you're looking it up, or if not, I can... I'm having a little look at. I don't know who look. that was. But, uh... Anyway, the 20 second minutes. No, oh, we've mentioned that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, then it's uh, then it's then it's uh, the first the first Atkinson Stanley goal of the afternoon. Yeah, not the best from a corner. Dunkley misses a long defensive header at the back stick. It bounces up. Mansell does an awkward overhead kick that lumps into the corner beyond the dive of BPF. Um, for all the kudos I'm giving to Peacock Farrell today, and I think we have to give him a lot of kudos today, I think he could have done better with that situation. I think his positioning wasn't very good. Hmm. I can't... I, I mean, I'd like to see it back, but yeah, I suppose he's, that should be where he is. I don't know whether he tries to... I don't know whether he tries to be a bit too clever at times and sort of read yeah. things rather than react. I don't know. 
Uh, well, I, don't, I don't think he read the situation to be in a position to react very well. I mean, it's no. an awkward bouncing ball, but it's a, it's a real scuffy, slimy miss hit from Well, it's from also Azzle. a little bit like, it's not a million miles from the Plymouth first goal, if you remember, back in the league game at their place. Don't recall, sir. But yeah, I'll take it away for well, it. Well, it, it was where that was one where Pico Farrell kind of like palmed it out, and their keeper, their player again, just sort of flicked it over his shoulder. And, yes, I remember that now. Yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't the same because it wasn't him palming it out, but it's, mm. it's just a similar sort of idea, I guess. Mm. So some of the organisation and was a bit off, I could say, and I could probably say Peacock Farrell. I mean, it's. It's weird today. I mean, I, I think Atkinson Stanley had a few decent chances, which we did well to keep out of the net. But that was that was really awkward. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't good. It didn't look good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm just having a little look through. I have had a little look through there. So that starting lineup: seven players who are over six foot one, and uh, at the back, a couple of absolute monsters. Um, so Michael Nottingham's one is. 194 centimeters, which makes him six foot three and a bit. Um, a chap, yeah. And Ross Sykes is 196, which makes him six foot four and a bit. Um, Harry Pell in, in the midfield as well is another six foot three, I think, six foot two and a half, six foot three. And Tommy Lee looked like a big guy, but he doesn't have a height on record. Um, so yeah, like he's that tall, oh. folks. <laughs> I'd like to measure him, but he's too big. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's that it's that thing of we didn't deal with the first header, and then it's a good reaction from from the the, the player to kind of improvise and, and make the overhead kick. But it is you just sat there as a Wednesday fan at three nil. At three nil, naturally, you do sort of step off the pace a little bit. That yeah. frantic pace you just couldn't have held out. Yeah. But what no. you don't, the last thing you want to do is concede a goal before half time it changes the feel of the game and then then it's like well what, what we can't do is concede again so you've got 10 minutes of sort of batting down the hatches and hope for mm. the left. um luckily we did i mean thankfully we did make it to half time having just conceded the one yeah it's just a shame it's a, it's a shame when we look so tantalizing and dangerous going forward when we just stop doing that at periods in games i mm. i know there's another team there and I know there's an ebb and flow to things, but it, we don't seem to be able to strike a balance of having a, a threat. Or, well, we I actually think, well, for periods in the second half, we did do that. But the third, this first half, we sort of went completely the other way from having a threat and pressing and worrying them. Um, all of that seemed to disappear after the goal, I, th- I thought. Yeah, no, I, I thought the interesting thing was like, I mean, we're never good at, I think going on with this, this is maybe just while we're talking about this, I can just jump ahead from the narrative and just say overall with this, we're not good on positive game management. We're not good on negative game management. No, no. Like we can't do the thing of being like, oh, let's let's keep the momentum going in that situation, which I imagine is tough because that was that was absolutely frantic. And it's I don't think it's something yeah, you can yeah. hold up for the rest of the game. But you need no. to be lethal in defensive state and assured. And it's not, it wasn't terrible today, but there's just no. there's something missing. It feels like there's something missing in that regards. Um, interesting enough, though, I mean, we nearly made it four. I, I, I think in a different world, like we should have scored four or five today. <laughs> like, really? We really could have, couldn't we? I mean, I and, know. And we did have it in the net um, that extra time as well. Uh, yeah. I don't think we ever stopped. I think they look defensively fairly frail. Mm. I don't think we ever stopped looking at looking dangerous, which is good. Because there's definitely been games where there's been an absolute halt to it, um, but it's just I don't know. I think when we're in these this phase of overwhelming teams, and it, I think these the overlapping centre backs are such a big part of it. And then the first thing we do when we need to defend is like, well, okay, you guys stay back. So we kind of lose that if it's all based on an overload on the wings. Yeah, we lose that. Partly because the midfield has no real presence and identity to it, I think, as well. Because it was a bit... True. They were kind of largely passengers, mm-hmm. most, of the, most of the midfield today. So, as I think I was going to say, we nearly got a fourth. That was Patterson in the 33rd minutes. 
Uh, he's played through the lump pass. It was one-on-one. You think in that situation with a little bit of bounce and a bit of composure, I thought he was going to lift it over the keeper. Yeah. And he yeah. decided to go side of him. Wasn't really sure about that as a decision. I and if he... maybe a little, maybe, maybe a little bit unfortunate that his side touch on that one, you know, it takes a takes a, a, a nick off the, the underside of the goalkeeper's left arm and then yeah. bounces out. Maybe it would have been on target. It just seemed a strange situation when you see a player in that situation. I wonder if a little bit he's he's because it's a little while since he scored, isn't it? I wonder if he's is it Wigan last time he scored? I think so. Mm. Maybe did he get one of the home game after Wigan? Anyway, but it's a it's a good few weeks. I, I wonder if he's kind of got to the stage where he's in his head about getting a finish uh, again because there's been a couple of times really he should have scored, and as you say that the, the first half that pass to Canberra instead of taking it on himself was a strange one. Um, that was a, th- this, ch- this chance was a bit, you'd expect him to really bury it. Did and, um, so I wonder if it's a bit of a combination of he's being asked to be the front man because of Gregory's absence at a time when he's not feeling particularly a goal threat in, in and of himself. Yeah, <laughs> um, no, that, that, that seems fair. That's a fair assessment. Um, the corner, you know, we, we had another Dunkley thumping a corner over from, the, from Baza's corner. Yeah. Um, I, I made the comment saying, like, we talked about momentum dropping. I, I said the momentum's dropped, but I still thought it was, I still thought it was decent. I mean, if this was a regular yeah, game, yeah. if this was a regular another Sheffield Wednesday game and it was this play after the 3 0 and it was 0 0, I'd be like, yeah, it's okay. Maybe I yeah. wouldn't be quite wowed, but I think if we'd kept and sustained that similar, if we'd played in that field for 90 minutes, we probably would have scored. Yeah. Um, but, but just feels maybe a bit after Lord's match after the Lord Mayor's show that we've we've just been just been devastating and and scintillating in attack. I would say as we, as I said, we just it couldn't possibly have been the first twenty minutes again and again because no. neither team would have had the legs for that. It was wild mm. stuff. Um, the, the only thing I want to say before the halftime whistle, just so we can have like a halftime timeout and just yeah, yeah. maybe recap on a couple of things. There's a couple of things I've brought up as I want to bring up. Um, 42nd minute, Pata's down from coming across. Unsure what the ref thought of that one, just looked like an unfortunate clash. And I'm very surprised at Patterson's yellow. Not so much a poor decision, such as a batshit bizarre one. The fourth yellow of the season for Patterson. Oh, I, I don't know if I agree there. I, I thought it was more just a coming I together. I thought Patterson nailed him after the, it was late and he nailed him. I didn't think so. I, I think it was one of those where the, the defenders cleared it and then the He's attacker was cut, cut across him. Mm. I think Patterson pretended he was injured to try and get some sympathy and then it's really annoying. Oh, yeah, I don't know when he does that, but like, I don't know. I didn't think that was a yellow myself. I thought this was the first start of, there's some poor refereeing to come. There's some poor refereeing, definitely, yeah. Mm. Well, it's interesting. I'd like to see it back, but I do think it looked, to me, it looked like... Uh, yeah, that classic, just mm. running across. Half time, I want to say, um, I think I really want to say in this position, like I like the look of Brennan. I think he deserves yeah. a spell of playing first team football and a new contract. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think he's looked he's looked really good these last two games. And, uh, we, <laughs> when you're not a goalkeeper, apparently we just wait and wait and wait in terms of giving out contracts. So we'll <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, I would like to. It be just would feel good to have something to build on in terms of a, a young presence in the team. But I, I know some of that's you know football manager FIFA sort of talking that you want young players in and they you expect them to improve. I'd like us to give Delhi Bashiru a new deal. I'd like I'd like Brennan to have a new deal. Um, At least we've got Delhi Bashiru for another season after this one. Is that right? Okay. I thought yeah, was like right. we signed him on a three-year deal, right? Okay. Well, that's one thing at least. And um, it was last season when we got rid of Monk, right? Yeah. I know it all feels, time feels strange. It time feels strange, yeah. You know. I think just looking back, I don't I don't know if I can blame the Bailey Peacock foul too much for their goal. Mm. I might be trying to just look gone. at like, I mean, this is a weird thing. I mean, we'll, we know what the end of this result is, so we can jump ahead and say like, but this is a game where we... You know, this this game of football, Rich, 
we won by one goal. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. should have won this at a canter. Oh, absolutely. Well, like you were Sheffield talking Wednesday. about we, you were talking earlier on, and I wanted to jump ahead when you talked about the whole thing with the Wednesday nights buying tickets for Plymouth to get the points to go to away games because yeah. away games are a great fun day out. The yeah, fans yeah, yeah. were nervous today. Yeah, like they were f- with they good were reason. Quiet. <laughs> well, that's it. It's just, and I, I get it, but like there needs to, like the only thing we think we can do as supporters is sometimes just be like, we need to, the players need to have a bit more spine yeah. and a bit more like yeah. get yourself over this. If you don't think it's going well, like, I don't know. I, like, I've had that instance recently of a couple of things where like I've been in the middle of something and think this is not going well, but you need to kind of hold it out mm. in that situation. Like yeah. I, I, it's a weird analogy. I remember a time I was doing a, a mock a teaching thing as part of instructor skills class that offer through my work and uh you know i was doing it and I, I just got nervous and it really showed and someone yeah. said to me afterwards it was like one of the feedback i got from the fellow people taking the course one of my peers was like we can't see that until don't you know we can't see that until yeah. you kind of admit that really yeah so the fans need to step up a bit like the players need to step up a bit, and I, it's I know it's a two way street, unfortunately. And I know it is. And I also but agree then, that like I agree with you and your perspective previously of like the fans need to be treated to something to give them a lift, which yeah. then helps us give the players a lift. Like it, you know, who's going to yeah. start this? Who's going to be the chicken and egg for this yeah. situation? Yeah, but I bet the place was absolutely rocking whilst we were scoring the goals, and probably after we were scoring the goals when the nerve setting is because we give them two goals and then it goes from being what a great game we're having to oh crap we've seen this before i know i know yes. well you know to leap forward it was yeah, john Pearson like, was okay. saying out of the 54th minute you know it's it's going to be a long 35 minutes yeah and it was it, and uh, it was also longer that there was another six minutes <laughs> after that as well Anyway. Yeah, five plus plus. Um, um, I, so I have to confess, I made a late decision to um, have a giant crumpet at half time. And um, <laughs> <laughs> subsequently missed their, missed basically everything up to their goal. I've now seen the goal, but did anything happen in the 10 minutes prior? Just, just as an FYI, if anyone from the from the football club is doing, do not put giant crumpets on at the concession stand at Hillsborough. <laughs> Rich is going to miss a lot of football. Oh. You, you, maybe when you say giant crumpet, you're making me think of like, you know, like giant Yorkshire puddings. You're making me think of like... Not quite that big. big. Not quite that big. Full of gravy and... Uh, <laughs> <sausages>. <laughs> Ooh, no, more, classic, more... classic Sunday roast meal. What are we having? Are we having lamb? No, we're doing a giant crumpet. Giant crumpet. <laughs> oh, your granny loves the edge of the crumpet, so you can't have that. So when did you, okay, when did you come back into the action? Basically just the, the sort of aftermath of their goal, really. Okay, I've got a few notes. 48-minute uh, Palmer Roman goal threat runs about 30, 40 metres, and he tried a really nice through ball kind of on the box, but it was just okay. a bit too far for the sliding Bannon. Uh, made a note, which is maybe more of a generic note, not a moment you miss, but I said, Pato's really looking to play the shithouse understudy to Gregory. <laughs> there was some good there was some good, good bits and pieces of that today. Uh, there was a moment where Patterson put one wide. I right. think Patterson's, Patterson's missed a few chances this game. Yeah. Uh, he put it uh, wide. Uh, that was actually on the angle, and FDB did, did brilliantly. To, there was a ball coming up and he he really leapt and competed for it really well, got a header on, then came to Patterson kind of on the break on the right kind of angle, and then kind of came in, he struck it and it was just struck it across. So it was okay. it was wide by about a feet or two. So th- okay. they're kind of the moments you're missing yeah. before the second and final act into the Stanley goal. Which was another set piece not particularly well cleared. That's probably it. And I mean, this is a weird one because I mean, I, I've tried to be critical about the first goal because I think I know that like looking back at it, you could see that Palmer was really upset with himself mm. for not providing kind of a block in that situation and having yeah. uh, the brilliantly titled Mumbongo, which uh, from Great my name. notes, it says, sounds like your mother making her own fruit drink at home. <laughs> I, I could have a point, but he I mixes. do. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> 
he could have a point, Liam Palmer, for blaming himself. I don't want players to blame themselves, but, you know, to, to maybe just be cognizant of what could be improved or, you know, this isn't the best he's played in that moment. That's fine. Mm-hmm. That was a really good strike from Mombongo. Really good strike. Brilliant finish. Like, I must say, I, I said my first note was, wow. Like, I, I think for that one, I'm just going to have to just doff my cap, take my hat off and yeah. just applaud. Because that's that's a difficult finish to make from that angle. Like, I thought it was a lot more central when I first watched it. And then I watched it back on the highlight. And he's he's quite a distance. He's quite an angle and he's quite a distance within the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. It's a it's sort of akin to it's not a set piece, sorry. Um, although it must be quite soon after a set piece because the, the defenders are off. But uh, <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, well, number five's up there. The the be the biggest man is there. <laughs> hmm. Um, who I think must be Sykes. Um yeah, interesting. So mm. it's a it's akin to uh Atty's effort. Um against Preston for the where he rolled it from the corner flag, isn't it? It's that sort of finish curling in at the at the back post. Well, first of all, wash your mouth out with soap. We, <laughs> we do not do we do not defame Adi Niu <laughs> sacrilege effort. <laughs> on this podcast. On this podcast. <laughs> his messy like goal. <laughs> just just even more brilliant, I think we we've talked about this in like our top ten goals, but it's it's the fact yeah. that it's like it's born from a like I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in the corner. Oh no, wait, no, fuck that. No, I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna turn this middle, <laughs> run for a bit and bend it into the corner. That's what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's all <laughs> context matters. Context does matter, folks. It does. Um, I was I was gonna yeah. suggest that Mumbongo would be um orange and pineapple Robinsons mixed with Vimto. That's what Mum does for Mumbongo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I really like really like what you're doing with drink, Mrs. Miller. I would say to you, I go You'd be there, Rich. I'm just I'm just saying should make I'll just, oh, shut up. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um th- this is where so Dunkley Dunkley and his free kicks loves a free kick on the edge of the box, does Dunkley. Mm. Um Mumbongo really turned things around for them, I think. He I gave think he them did. a presence yeah. up top. I, I, I was sort of joking about it in my intro, but suddenly we were making mistakes that we weren't making. And Palmer mm. was pushing clearances and Dunkley was failing to clear headers. and Just things were getting skied or put out of play when before they were landing in play and landing with our players. And in particular, Dunkley just started giving away stupid fouls um, when he couldn't. Mombongo would foul him, or he'd he'll foul he'd foul Mombongo. It's just the way it went. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the the one of those that came the closest to really hurting us was the sixty second minute when yeah. uh, Harry Pell had an absolute thunder chuff of a, an effort from from a good way out and ha- and had Bailey Peacock Farrell at full stretch to save it. At the it would have been top bins as well. It would have been some goal. Yeah, that end. was that was an absolute brilliant effort. To get the power on it, to get the power, the accuracy, and the curl on that from that yeah. position is a truly special thing. So even more special from Peacock Farrell to come across and to, uh, great save. to do that. Yeah, absolutely great save. I do want to add as well, like fifty-eighth um, minute. I think it was out on our right flank just before this. Dunkley fouls. I said in uh, in inverted commas. Yes, but the ref isn't helping things. And then yeah. Atkinson took the worst free kick I've seen in quite a while. <laughs> It was more that was to make the reference. That was the field goal attempt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, the one where they rolled it across the mm. to, yeah to the player on the edge, and he just yeah hoofed it miles and miles in the air. Mm. <clears throat> we then made a double substitution, so Corbino yeah. taken off for Brown uh, and Canberry off for Gregory. What do you think of of that double sub, Rich? Well, I, I mentioned last week that I thought Corbin had run, did run out of ideas as the game went on. So That's fair. I, maybe sensible. I, I was a bit worried. We've touched on Brad Brown has his frailty. Um, he can't. He doesn't lack for legs at all, and he does work hard. Um, but he does have a bit of a tendency to give the ball away in pressured situations. So I was slightly, I was slightly worried about that aspect. Um, 
but lovely to see Gregory come in and you'd hope with his introduction the ball would stick at, the, at their end of the pitch a bit more I don't know that that necessarily happened but I thought I thought probably given Patson's yellow card and Canberry's goal I thought Canberry's a little bit hard done by to be the one that came off out of the two but I do understand Patterson is just you want that action on the pitch don't you you want that passion and that I guess so it, uh, maybe Patterson attitude. today unfortunately shows that whole feeling of the whole piece that we have of you know you've got to be half of it's to turning up right mm. But like he's making the effort to turn up. It's the Kieran Lee before he became a Kieran Lee goal scoring machine. You know, yeah. he he's doing a lot to, to to get in those positions. I think I was a bit more just worried about Patterson just because he was he was on that yellow. Not that I seemed agitated. I just I didn't trust this ref with this situation. Well, it's also Patterson's game is it's built around being difficult, isn't it? Being making sort of niggly challenges and shoving and elbows and leaning on people. And, you know, it's kind of, it's all workarounds and slightly bending the rules. So when he's on a yellow, you do feel like it's just a ref taking something the wrong way or not not finding him quite so charming uh, away, away from him getting, getting a red on top of it. And as you say, yeah, this referee, full of bizarre decisions yeah a lot of interesting plot twists for us you know this m night and m night shaman shaman and ding dong of a referee um moments from that oh 65th minute just as a minor thing bpf worries me with his fake out mm. i didn't need to i didn't need that bailey i didn't need that thank you really didn't need that um accrington tried to steal a throw in in classic scouse behavior when they were moaning so much about time wasting, it uh, it just fed. It just did it for us, didn't it? Really? Yeah, that that was bizarre. They took the, the throw in when it had been mm. given for us, and it just added to the time that was being wasted. So thank you very much. Seventieth <laughs> minute, Wednesday break well, but Bannon's final ball wasn't good. That was a really promising moment, and then it just heat. There was two back to back, wasn't there? Where, yeah. Where that was the best one of the two, though, because he had the second one was the Gregory one. That was the seventy-second minute. But that he had three options and somehow managed to make play a pass that was bad for all of them. <laughs> Patterson, Deli Bashiru, and uh, Gregory were breaking. I think it was three on two, so that's four Wednesday players to two Accrington Stanley players. And Bannon played it to the two right between the two Accrington Stanley players, so they could just wander out with possession. Awful, terrible decision making. <laughs> Barry, will you go A, B, or C? I'll go backslash, please. Because <laughs> that, if he'd had a little bit more composure there, he could have played through one of them very easily. And I, th- I also thought he got away with, I thought it was a bad pass to Gregory, the second chance in, uh, two minutes later. It was a bad pass, but Gregory, through a sort of mixture of luck and, <laughs> and strength, managed to make a chance out of. Because he sort of passed it behind Gregory's feet, but Gregory managed to sort his feet out, managed to bundle through the first tackle, but unfortunately the keeper was sort of out quick enough to make it a very easy easy save. Um, hmm. Can I give you a pithy comment, Rich? Go for it. 73rd minutes. Um, I do remember back on the Mountain Goat seminal album, uh, The Sunset Tree, hast thou <laughs> considered the tetrapod? Which makes Luke, <laughs> Luke want to say to Darren Moore, Hast thou forgotten the pato pod? <laughs> do we remember when uh, Patterson used to take throw-ins and they used to be like really dangerous long yeah. throw-ins? And then we did it like once or twice, and then we just completely forgot to do it ever again. Yeah. Why? Why? Why are we? Why are we forgotten to do that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that we ever made the most of them. No, but we I may think... as well. It's better than it's better than any of a throw-in. It's an take. option, isn't it? It's yeah. an option. Yeah, we're just bad at throws. Hmm. <clears throat> He was probably told off, told that was cheating. <laughs> oh, and still the near misses uh, kind of come, really. The hits of the near misses. Yeah. I mean, not like, not not as big as some of the stuff from that first with the Pato one-on-one and then Bannon inexplicably putting wide on uh, when he's yeah. through. through I love this. Uh, yeah, the next chance, though, I love that Bannon pass, that sort of inside-out that was, pass oh, to Gregory. was so gorgeous. brilliant. 
I mean, this is this is what we this is where we pay the big bucks, and this is why we get Barry Bannon, right? This is yeah, the Scottish yeah. player, the Scottish man. <laughs> no, I said the really? Scottish the Scottish player because I was doing a take on from. Uh, oh, is this, very a back, good. is this a back four I see before me? <laughs> but then I thought I thought it's a bit difficult because I mean you know we have other Scottish players. I mean the most Scottish of them all is Liam Palmer, as we know. Of course, of course, a broad um, brick to lift the nest, as uh, <laughs> Scott, as Liam Palmer often says. <laughs> There's a palms loose about this hoose. <laughs> We're just waiting for that DMCA for uh, to come through, folks, for that one. Yeah, that was an incredible ball from Bannon. Uh, Gregory did well to... It was, it was more of a fizz cross, wasn't it, along the line? It was, so a bit like, yeah. A bit like Hunt in the first time, the first half. Yeah. With that one. Um, here's a note, Rich. Uh, Patterson, he can't get to it. Um, but he's fouled by two players. But since he's nowhere near the ball, nothing happens. Uh, yeah. Because I think that's why he couldn't get to it. Because he had two players sandwiching him. Yeah. Just double teaming like like a like a Italian <laughs> herbs and cheese bun from Subway. He was he was the meatball marinara. Yes. The oat, the oatmeal marinara. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But I think this is where we got the balance right. You know, this period of the second half, yeah, we start. We had enough of a threat to keep them honest because I think there's been too many games where we don't. We sort of almost remove those threats. I was glad that Gregory came on for Canberra and it wasn't a defender or because how many times early in this season there's Darren Moore like it was Che Dunkley who just get chucked on and like oh yeah now we've got three at the back oh now we've got six at the back and it just didn't work because we didn't have any outlets this time at least we kept a threat going and it meant they couldn't just sit in our half and play the ball round us. Mm. so this was much much better and much much nicer to watch and we c- could and should have taken some of these chances um brown had a really decent effort as well late on uh, the 79th minute patterson sort of fed him through um and, and brown just chased into that empty space saw that there wasn't really anybody up with him, so he let a shot go, and it was a decent effort at the near post. The keeper had to make a save. Um, nice, to, nice to see him have the confidence to take that on. Mm. But just such pace as well. Mm. Just rapid. The, the, boy yeah. is, the boy is quick. The boy is quick. I th- and I think you've got to say today was getting was a day when we got the subs right. Brown's mm. extra legs and pace did help late on, and... Uh, he didn't cause us any problems with his dalliances on the, his dallying on the ball, and and Gregory was was looking to get in behind, and keep them keep them honest. And again, on another day, maybe could have had a goal or set up a goal. So yeah, some some good some good subs I think this time. I'm really glad to flash forward and just say I'm I'm really I was really angry angry with a couple of things coming up on the 81st minute here. First, yeah, all, this is this is my longest single note. <laughs> First of all, I'm glad for a team that basically does cheating and rolling around the floor that Accrington and Stanley got fuck all from this game. Yes. Let's, let's make that the first thing. Second <laughs> thing, I think the bigger thing, unfortunately, is because this is something that really kind of irked me because the way it was dealt with was exceptionally poor from the yeah. referee, from the officials. So we're in a situation where they've got a player down on the floor. It's not a head injury, so we can keep playing on. We break and then it goes out to Jaden Brown, who's on the angle, who's apparently kind of like almost in a position for being one on one. Calls it back because Umbongo's rolling around on the floor. Terrible officiating. They then have who who went off? Was it Pell who went off for them? They had another player. Um, it was Lee's. It was Lee. Sorry, Lee. Lee. Lee goes off. Limps off. Who uh, first started? So this is one of these moments. This happens quite often with the refs. They let a wild challenge go and then it just escalates because they didn't stop it when they should have. So Lee went in ridiculous. If you watch it back, Delhi Bashiru controls it. Palmer sort of flicks the ball. It, it broke from the corner. Palmer flicks it back just kind of panically. Um, but Delhi Bashiru turns it into something. He's about to run away from his man and Lee just scythes in there. It's a, it's a foul. It's a dirty, dirty tackle and injures himself doing it. <laughs> but the ref doesn't stop it there. So Luongo dives in to kind of match the energy. Whether that, The ref seemed to then indicate play on for Accrington, which yeah. is weird. 
Um, then I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. I have it without seeing it back. I was I had my heart in my mouth when I saw the challenge on Mumbongo. Uh, who, was it Bannon and Palmer that went in on him? I don't recall. I, I didn't see. I didn't see what the happened there. My the my attention was still further on the pitch. I mean, we we said carry on. It can't have been. It presumably can't have been Bannon because Bannon was then involved in the break, so it must have been somebody mm. else. But I, there was two players went sort of pincer movement on Mumbongo, and I th I think maybe it could or should have been a foul. But again, the ref plays on. We go forward. Bannon spreads the ball out. We we're gonna we we're gonna have an easy attack. Gonna have an easy shot and goal. And that's when he pulls it. Bizarre, utterly, utterly bizarre defender, uh, referee. Because there's no touch of it. Nobody's touching the head even to fake a head injury. He just decided to pull it back and then give us a drop ball later. A drop ball in the middle of the park as well? Just nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Because Brown had the ball out and he was ready for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, yeah, just Brown was just... like to be like, it's like he was going to be in like... Yeah, he's, he's three steps from a shot on goal, basically. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally weird. And thankfully, it doesn't hurt us today. Thankfully, but th thankfully. There's been but so it... many times these awful refereeing decisions. Awful dog shit refereeing today. He probably, in the space of a minute, got about six things wrong. <laughs> uh, that's not even exaggerating it. But it's the you stop it when somebody throw, goes in as wildly as Lee does. If you stop it there, none of the escalation happens. But it all, oh, I don't know. Mm. Um, yeah, clueless, clueless nonsense. Yeah. 87th minute. I'm worried as Pell steps over it, but turns out he's shit and can't do that again. <laughs> but puts that wide pretty, yeah. Com pretty, yeah. It's not a floaty effort that second time. Hmm. And the only thing I have to mention is you know, we go into we go into stoppage time, which a lot of stoppage time is given, and then we play more stoppage time for some reason. Uh, the 90 plus fifth minute that was almost a penalty. On Delhi Bashuru being very, very close, being fouled just outside the area. I love his strength, and I mean that. Considering that he's played every minute of the ninety whatever, and he's still got that in in his locker. It's, he's still it's got the, the energy and the gusto in the tank to just to just uh, to just still have that strength is is phenomenal. It's really great. No, I love. Well, so uh, there's a couple of things I picked out towards the end there. <laughs> the first one's a slight criticism. Twice or maybe even three times, the ball landed with Bannon after a clearance, and I kind of subconsciously was thinking, "Oh, we can just relax for a little bit now. He'll carry the ball forward, relieve some pressure." And he just ran immediately out of play uh, twice, and then gave the ball away the third time. Um, but I did really enjoy, yeah, in terms of the uh, the, the time wasting, um, I really enjoyed Gregory's effort where um, Luongo sort of tried to volley it down the line. And Gregory watched it drop over his shoulder, drop out of play, and just hoofed it out of play, uh, like about twenty yep. yards. <laughs> yeah, out, 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 out for a goal kick. Yeah, out yeah. for a goal kick, and looked but, really surprised that it was. <laughs> did it so <laughs> smoothly <laughs> that that you'd never think it was anything yeah. like calculated and pre-measured. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, and he did really well it, to it, win it. Sort of Apologised. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, what am I like? <laughs> Getting old. <laughs> he did really well to win a throw in right to death as well. Like we did some good yes, work in the did. corners. Yeah. Thankfully, we did that at the corners at the right time. Like maybe in the end there was some weird. There was eventually an some element of game management game. going yeah. on. Like we we got there, but it took us took us two goals. Yeah, to concede really. And I loved that from Delhi, but it was almost like a kind of mini. Sorry to bring it up again. That holiest of holy moments, a mini version of that, where he sort of like was headed towards the corner flag, and he's like, "Hold on a minute, I can have these two. <laughs> <laughs> just charged at them, and it was all. I mean, the guy just couldn't decide which bit of him to foul. He's like grabbing onto his shorts and his undershirt, um, and he really was like probably a step or he probably could have given it as a penalty. I think. I think there was contact outside and inside the box. Yeah. Uh, but the ref played it safe and just gave us the free kick. Mm. Um, I love, I love that little monster, Deli Bashiru. What a guy! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a close call, but maybe it shouldn't have been. But uh, a win's a win. Win is, as they say, a win. And that first thirty minutes, about as good as anything we've served up all season. Totally. All the bluster and excitement and overlaps, but with goals added. Really nice to see. I think Corbino, Corbino 
being on the left is definitely my, my preferred position for him as well. I just think it it, it, it puts his weapons in the right place because mm. he is right-footed, but he's good enough to cross with his left if he needs to and pass with his left if he needs to. But it means when he comes in, he's on his good foot so he can score the goals like that. That was, that, that was, a, yeah, that was a real highlight. Um, yeah, so there we go. Any, any other notes? Any more pithy remarks? No, no more pithy remarks. I think we can get into... This is going to be a tough one. Who's... Um... Picking out a star man. Who's MOTM. In a, in a city of stars, as, as Ryan Gosling. And, uh, in a game with Mom Bongo. Bongo, who is the real mom? <laughs> <laughs> they may drink it in the Congo, but in Accrington, who walks away with the star prize? <laughs> it doesn't really work, but don't, don't examine it too close. <laughs> don't examine it too close. <laughs> <laughs> who is man of the match today that's a tough one a lot of strong performances i must say yeah collectively you know some weakness but um what can we say this was a good this was a great league debut uh starting shirt league debut for brennan i think i think this is the first time yeah. i've seen him in the league so yeah he acquitted himself pretty well uh, Dunkley did well to obviously get the first goal and had some good moments and Got the goal. you know looking like a real beast from those those corners. I think the player who we we thought we signed, yeah, is kind of coming out in that element and he's he's been a pretty consistent defender for us and he didn't definitely you know again didn't didn't really fuck up a great deal. Uh, BPF pulled off a couple of really really great saves. Really glad to see him back. Hopefully he's back for a, a decent spell now. Such wood, not for going any Such, yeah. stuff that happens. The Luongo nice did well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Luongo, nice Luongo bits did really there. well. Palmer got two assists. Palmer got two assists. I liked Hunt. I think. Was that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think Cor- my temptation. Corbinelli. My temptation is probably Palmer. Interesting. How about you go with Palmer and I'll go with someone else? Okay. Uh, I don't know who else I can say was better than Palmer. <laughs> I mean, if you can be, if you can be centre back with two assists, Luke, go on. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Liam Palmer. I think I it's said, I said for the sake of spreading, spreading the joy and spreading the spread yeah. the so spreading the prizes out. Then I thought I'd pick someone else, but no, it's, it's going to be Liam Palmer. Dunkley's fair, I think. If you want, to Dunkley was pretty that. decent. He got a goal and had some good moments. Well, but then you know, like I, I, you know, I can probably say like Peacock Farrell probably kept us in it. Yeah, kept us in it in a game where we scored three goals and we should have won over Cantor. <laughs> See, that should, feels... we, should we be picking two defenders as our star players? <laughs> I like Corbino as well. Yeah, Corbino is very good. Ooh. I think I'm going to do a review on Palmer. Let's agree on Palmer. Well, nice, good stuff. The guy's got a new contract the other week. Let's give him. Yeah, let's give him his roses. One two. <laughs> it's roses. Lovely stuff. In fact, that's how we're going to do. Actually, we're going to do. For a Christmas episode, Rich and I are going to go around to Liam Palmer's house and give him a tin of Cabbage Roses. Oh, yeah. I have bought loads of rose petals because I thought we were going to be naked on his bed covered in rose petals. I thought that's... <laughs> I must have got this wrong. A bit mean of Sivarian American Beauty. Yeah. Cool. But flipped around so that, yeah, with um, we're... we're... <laughs> Creepy old Kevin Spaces. Creepy old Kevin Spaces. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh, well, there you go. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to do after a win now, really. It's been so long. It's been a, it's been a hot minute, hasn't it? It has. But, yeah, um, I, I, I mean, a very, a very fine first half, um, a pretty solid second half. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, not, not bad for this Wednesday team. Uh, one of our better efforts, definitely. So we've got we've got MK Dons at home midweek. Um, so that that could be could be challenging. Mm. And then we're we're at home again. We've had loads and loads of home games this November, and we've got Wick and Wanderers uh, at home uh, next uh, next Saturday. So uh, and we've moved up a, 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 a space in the table. We're we're up into seventh. Yep, a couple of points behind oh. MK Dons, who we're playing midweek in Sunderland. Um, and Wickham are Wickham are fourth, fourth and you and know, and are so fifth and fourth, res- respectively. So, if we are if we're a playoff team, we're playing two of our peers, 
if mm. we're a mid-table team, we're playing two of the top teams. <laughs> mm. And if we're relegation fodder, oh, I don't think we are relegation fodder. Hopefully, <laughs> that that much I can I can feel, you know, fairly confident about. Fairly confident about, although mm. I, in, in saying fairly confident, I immediately doubted myself and wished I hadn't. So Massimo Longo is still our top performing player, but he's gone down from his his eight to seven point six on the on the ratings board. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was so hesitant to put in another performance. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, on that note, I think that, that that about wraps it up. That's good. I will uh, wish you well and hope you have a good week. And same to the folks at home. And uh, we'll we'll speak to you next week. Cheerio. Let's see everybody. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.